Today's guest is Nick Comadina. He's a speaker, fitness coach, perspective, empowerment coach, and mentor. Um, he runs the Impact Legacy Mastermind. He has a really cool story. He grew up uh, in a hard way, single mom, trailer park, really had to learn to break away from those environments, um, unlearn a lot of belief patterns, rewire his subconscious behaviors. And he scaled his first business organically to multiple seven figures. Um, and at that point he did another deep dive, like deep into his soul and rebuilt <laughs> everything from like, from the depths of his soul. And he teaches others to do the same. Now he's worked with thousands of individuals all the way from at home parents to CEOs of corporate giant companies, um, professional athletes, everyone in between. Um, he has some really cool perspectives that I think you guys will really enjoy. He's going to talk about how we can stop self-sabotaging self sabotaging success by shifting our subconscious minds and the way that we're seeing life um, and finding purpose in our in what we're creating without relying on passion all the time. He's got a cool mind. I like the way he thinks um, and it shows and what he's been able to build in his life. So hopefully you guys take some value from this. We'll link up his uh, website, social medias and the show notes. Let's go ahead and dive in. Here is Nick Comadina. Okay. So Nick, I was reading some of your background and we're going to have fun today because we come from similar backgrounds. I also grew up dirt poor with a single mom. I was the youngest nice. of five kids and had to completely relearn life, but mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of fun that way. Right. Cause you, I mean, obviously there's many things from our childhood that I'm grateful for. Right. <laughs> and in okay. terms of money and success and health and all that, I just, it was like a lot of unwiring blank slating and rewiring, which obviously wow. you have done. So let's start there, you know, so we can, and then we can get into some of the mindsets that might help other people and repatterning towards success. But like, can you tell us a little bit how this went for you? Uh, so just kind of where I started versus where I am now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I grew up single mom, trailer park, the old, the old Eminem eight mile story, you know, <laughs> my, my whole family and, and not really in a, in a, negative way here just is what it is my nobody in my family was really successful you mm -hmm. know and, and i and i just kind of grew up in this trailer park in the mountains of california it was 300 dollars a month a month for the space rent you know like our trailer yeah. didn't have wheels on it it had blocks underneath it so yeah it, it was just it's the reality that you're in and i couldn't even if you would ask me what, how, how far could you go in life? I wouldn't be able to imagine what I do right now. Cause it was so outside of right. my environmental reality. You mm -hmm. know, it's like, how can you like reality is what we see here, touch, taste, and smell. So right. anything outside of those five senses isn't in your reality. You're not aware of it. So how can you possibly imagine a life that you've never even seen? Right. And so when you have somebody growing up that way, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Tara, I have no idea how I got to where I was. I had, I had no influence in entrepreneurship. I had no influence on being successful, going big, living large and, and making your own path. It just, it was like from an early age, I, I was a rebel, right? Yeah. I was like, the rules are definitely made to be broken, right? That's that, yeah. that much I know, right? Like whatever yeah. everybody else is doing that, you know, I would just, I would always look at it and I just had this, I guess, just natural tendency to be a leader. Mm -hmm. I didn't a free oh, I thinker. Didn't, I hear too, yes, but I yeah. didn't understand what it was as a child. I thought right. you know, teachers back then, well, even now the school system is not really tailored around creative minds. You were yeah. bad. If you didn't fall in line, you were really probably like a bad kid. <laughs> I was the worst. But the thing is, <laughs> I, I started as a math was my best subject, mm -hmm. but I did math in my head. And they, if you didn't write it out and you didn't do the work exactly the way the teacher wanted you to do it, it was wrong. Mm -hmm. And so there was this time where they flunked me because they thought I was cheating. Wow. So they took me into the office and they gave me a brand new test and told me to do it. And I did it, got a hundred percent. And they were like, well, you need to do it this way. Or you're going to fail. So I started failing. Wow. Can I interject something right here? Okay. Please. I have two teenagers. One of them is a junior in high school and one is a freshman. And they're, they're like you, their brains. Like I do this thing in my coaching called neurotyping. Guys. I already know you're a one B like it's, uh, it's the efficiency. Their brains are efficient. They see the path of least resistance. And they're like, why would you do all that when you could just do this oh. and get there quicker? Right. And they're in public school. My mm -hmm. daughter 
was failing math this year. So I took her to like, there's like this tutoring, it's called mathnasium, right? Like I took her in there and they had her do a problem. And she sit, sat there and they're, they're like, we just want to see how your, your mind works or whatever. And she's sitting there doing it like she's supposed to do in school. And they were like, oh, or you, yeah, that's great. You can do it like that. Or you could do it like this, or you could do it like this, or you could do it like this, or just however you get there is fine. And it was like the, I was sitting there as an entrepreneur, like, this is business. This is what happens is in business versus like public government funded education, right? Like it was such a, like for her, she was like, oh, I can just do it however I want. And like yeah. the most efficient way that makes the most sense. Oh, okay. And like, so what you're experiencing, it's still going on. Like it, yeah. it kind of kills me with my kids in school. Right. Cause I'm like, yeah, right now you're in that system and like, cool, do play it however you want. But like the fact that your brain wants you to get there the, in the most efficient way that makes sense. Don't you ever lose that? <laughs> well, I mean, so. if you want to go a little bit down the conspirator rabbit hole, right? You've got John Rockefeller, totally. the big, biggest businessman of all time. And he's the one who created the school system. Totally. He's on record saying, I don't want a country of thinkers. I want a country of workers. Yep. Yep. Right. And so yep. you go through the school system and they teach you don't think outside the box. This is it's very uh it's very convergent thinking, right? Yes. And divergent thinking is punished. Right. So it's think one way, and if it's out of this, it's wrong. It's like, ah, no, 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 follow what you're told. <laughs> right. You go to college and you get all this debt and you work, and and people's view on money is wrong because of this. Mm-hmm. It's the rat race mentality, it's the, yep. the carrot stick at the end of at the end of the pole that you're always chasing because if if people spend, and this is how the, this is how the rat race system is made up. If I can get you to spend your entire life feeling like you have to sprint as hard as you can just to survive, then you don't have enough time to actually think for yourself, mm-hmm. which means you don't have enough time to create the life that you want to create for yourself. And that benefits me as a banker. That benefits me as a high up in society. There it is. You look yep. at people yeah. who go, I don't have time. I don't have the money to invest in myself. I can't miss days at work. And it's like, well, you're missing days of your life as a byproduct. So yep. what's more expensive to you? You know, mm-hmm. I think I've, I've spent majority of my life very aware of death and like, mm-hmm. I'll, we'll make this not sound cryptic, but I'm, I'm, I'm very aware that, I mean, you know, Hey, I woke up today one day closer, right? Like I'm not, I'm the second yeah. the day you're born is the day you start dying and people mm. spend their whole life unaware of death. And that's why they waste so much time. Yeah. Right. So I, I use a comparison like this. Let's say, let's say you go to the grocery store. You're a mom. So I know my, my mom's the same. I know this is you. You go to the grocery store and you buy everything for the kids. You buy yogurt, you buy rice, you buy all these things, right? Two weeks go by. And you just made dinner and you're ready to eat, or you, maybe you eat the whole dinner, you're super full, and you go to put the leftovers in the fridge and you look up and you see that the yogurt expires tomorrow. What becomes the most valuable food in the entire house? <laughs> yogurt. Yep, the yogurt. You're stuffed and you're like, fuck, we got to eat this, right? Otherwise, we're going to waste <laughs> it. Right. If, if nobody's hungry, you go to your neighbor's door, you're like, please eat this yogurt. It's about to expire, right? I don't want to waste it. Mm-hmm. I don't want the value to go away. And once we realize the yeah. expiration date of our own lives, it's too late. Mm-hmm. We can't treat it the same way, mm-hmm. right? The rice is in there. It doesn't have an expiration date. So you don't care. You don't need to eat the rice. You can eat it next week. You can eat it next month. You don't care about it. Mm-hmm. The second you're aware of the expiration date, it's infinitely more valuable. Mm-hmm. So when we're unaware of the expiration date of our own lives, we waste all this time. We don't care. And then all of a sudden you go, shit, I only got like five years left. It's too right. late for your life to be valuable. Right. Yeah. I love this talk. I talk to my kids about this all the time. Cause I'm like, listen, like in terms of taking risks, like we all have the same outcome. Everyone has the same outcome. We die. Mm-hmm. Facts. It's, it's going the same way for everybody. So just do whatever you want. Yeah. What's the worst that's going to happen? You die. <laughs> Literally, right. You're not getting out alive. So stop yeah. taking it seriously, but we have this, we have this whole, like, and this is where people fuck up with generating wealth for themselves. They think that they need to just get there as soon as possible. It's like, if if I'm not immediately there, it's not worth it. I want to start a new business, but I need to be making at least $20,000 a month for it to be worth it. And you're like, what? Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's like, when you get to the end, then what? If I give you, if I give you everything (laughs) you've ever wanted, right? You're like, I want a business where I'm making a million dollars a year. And I'm like, cool, here's a million dollars. Now what? 
oh shit, now you have more to be scarce with because you've never healed yourself. You've never understood yeah. how to change your view of the world. Money, this is where people get fucked up with money. Money does not change your situation. It enhances or amplifies the current situation that you're in. So if if somebody is stuck in scarcity, they have this poor mindset, they're just trying to get by, they're frantic around money, they fear money, toxic relationship with money. Mm-hmm. And I hand them $25,000. There's only two things they do with that money. It either goes in their savings account and they never touch it, or they panic spend the entire thing. Right. Either way, their life is the exact same and they're just as scarce, if not more scarce now. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Money this is change. incredibly common. It doesn't, everybody thinks that money is going to change their state. They always think <laughs> what, and I see this in, cause I've, I've scaled multiple companies mm-hmm. and I've had a company with 28 employees. That's been my, my okay. 28 employees. And I have these things, these principles inside of my company. If, if you go in, this is where everybody, 90% of people listening to this, if you don't work for yourself, that's okay. Well, I want to get that out of, out of here. Hustle culture makes everybody feel like if you don't own a business, that you're a piece of shit. And that's not true, right? People start to feel right. bad. I don't own a business owner. I must suck. It's like, well, how do these businesses scale? If everyone's an entrepreneur, who's going to right. help who build, right? It doesn't yeah. work. And some people don't want to, they don't want to own a business, right? And that's cool. And I respect that. Yeah. Right. But business owners need those people. Like those people are more valuable because the dream doesn't work without you. Yeah. Yeah. So just want to get that out of there before anybody sees it. But if, if you're inside of my company and I, let's say I bring you in at a lower level entry position and people do exactly what's expected of them and they do it incredible and they think I'm really good at my job. So that's, what's going to get me promoted. Mm-hmm. No, if you're really good at what I'm telling you to do, you've proven to me that I've hired you for the exact position and the exact pay. Hmm. If you want to go higher, then you have to do more work. And most people are scarce and they go, well, I'm not going to do more work unless I get paid more. Mm. But it's the opposite. That's true. You're not going to get paid more until you do more work. Mm. If I see somebody in level one and they're finishing everything and they're doing level two stuff, I go, oh shit, I got to get bumped up. Yeah. And then they're doing level two work. They're doing level three work. And now they're helping people on level one. And I go, shit, that person should be a manager. Mm -hmm. So it's this, Mm -hmm. it's this scarcity of, well, I can't do anything unless I have more money. And that's why people don't have it. Mm. So good. Mm. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about this amplification of money, this money mindset, money blocks, right? Like, Um. (laughs) I mean, I don't know about you. I grew up witnessing my mom saying that exactly, right? It's like if a bunch of money comes in, you just spend, spend, spend till it's all gone, right? And and I see this all the time. Or you have like the hoarder mentality, like the poor rich. Is that what I'll call them? The poor rich people, right? They, it's just like, don't ever spend. They're like buying McDonald's value meals because they got that like Warren Buffett thing. You know, what are all your thoughts on in terms of how you see people relate to money? You know, what do, what do you see are like common blocks that, keep people from investing, creating more wealth, creating new revenue streams, you know, the the way they're looking at it in their mindset. Well, a lot of this, there's, there's three things that dictate behavior. And for some reason, I'm blanking on the first one. Um, It'll come back. I think it's environment, but the next one is role models up to the age of 12 and then experiences after the age of eight that shapes our behavior and behavior is very modifiable. All behavior is changeable, but if you look and let's just, I'll just use one example here. You grew up in a household where mom and dad were very scarce of money Mm -hmm. and you asked for something and they told you like, hey, no, we only spend money on things that are important. And so now there's been this trauma seed that planted to you that, oh shit, well, we only spend money on things that are important and mom and dad aren't spending it on me. So I must not be worth it. And so now these people go through without realizing they have this wound right. of money that they're not worthy of money. Now, money, people people have this weird thing with money where they're like, well, it's easy for you to say because you make a ton of it. So I actually, when I coach people in my mastermind, we, we look at money as a relationship and we use money for love. So let's look at a toxic relationship where yeah. you're in this relationship and you're afraid of love. Mm. Right. Are you are you codependent in your relationship? Are you thinking that your partner has to do things and change your internal state? Or are you able to have your own happiness on your own? Right. Mm -hmm. Are you codependent with money? Right. What's your attachment style? Do you have an anxious attachment style with money? 
right? Because it's that whole chase, right? Everybody's been in a relationship where somebody's super codependent and clingy and they're like, Jesus Christ, get me away from them. Well, that's the relationship you have with money and you're wondering why money seems to run away from you. Love it. Wow. It's the same It's the same principles. Money is just an energy exchange. Like people really got to realize this. And I'm, I'm a very spiritual person. The universe has proved itself to me a lot. And I have my own relationship with God. I'm not religious, but I'm very spiritual. Mm-hmm. And when you really look at these things, you know, every everybody's had these synchronicities. You think about something, you have this really high emotional response and it all works out. Or you're over here dreading the worst case scenario and it's all you think about. And that's what happens. And you go, see, it always works. I'm like, that's interesting, isn't it? The thing that you seem to focus on the most with the highest emotional usually ends up working out. So you're that powerful of a human being. Right. And you're still thinking like, look, at, think of how vast the universe is. Hundreds of trillions of miles, light years long. You're telling me that it's like, you're not worth having a couple million dollars in your bank account. Like that is so insignificantly minuscule in the grand scheme of things. And yet we devalue ourselves as lesser than that. Right. When we've got all this power inside of us right. to, to, to create anything that we want to create for ourselves, you know, yeah. it's like, We'll do another example. Tara, let's say that I I go, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wire you $10 million today. You cool with that? Yes, definitely. How about a trillion dollars? You cool with that? I'll give you a trillion dollars today. You cool with that? Yeah. Cool. Okay, with that. cool. Only yeah. catch, you can't wake up tomorrow. Mm. Do you do it? Me, no, yeah, definitely not. <laughs> no. So just just that act right there, you've proven that. Who you are just waking up in the morning is worth more than a trillion dollars a day. Yeah. So your life is infinitely more valuable than money. And yet we base our lives based off of very small things. Like nobody would ever pay me a hundred dollars. But here's the thing. Two truths can exist at once. We just tend to choose one of them. So you can sit here. Let's use a toxic relationship for an example. I think everybody's been in a relationship where you felt like you weren't good enough for the person, right? I'm, I'm sure most people have. And if you're the one listening, like, well, fuck you, right? Good for you. <laughs> but you can have this truth of, I am not enough for this person to love me. And you can choose that truth for yourself. And all the universe does, does nothing's good or bad. Right. Remember, English is a human language. It's not a universal language. The universal language is energy. Mm -hmm. So if I make this my truth and I'm sending this energetic signature out of I'm not worth I'm not I'm not worth it. I'm not enough. Well, then the universe is just sending me matches to prove my truth. Right. And everybody's experienced this as well. Once that relationship ends and you just you choose this second truth, you go, I am worth more than this. I'm I'm done settling in a relationship. Like I am so much more valuable. You've been treating me like shit. I'm done. I'm worth more. And then the next day they're like, I'm at the love of my life. I got the job of my dreams. Everything clicked in my life. That person was holding me back. No, you were choosing a truth. And we love to place blame on other people. We love to give other people credit for our power because we're unaware Mm-hmm. You're getting into such a powerful discussion of the conscious and subconscious mind. And mm-hmm. I know you have background in health too, you know, that's a big part of your life. And like, it's so fascinating, you know, I'll have clients. I'm like, so, you know, what do you want? I really want to lose 30 pounds. I'm like, okay. You know, I'll kind of like trickle into it at the beginning. Right. And then in a follow-up call, I'll be like, so did you actually believe you were going to lose 30 pounds? Mm. No. Right. Did you actually believe that you were going to eat healthy this week? Or was there like a 1% or bigger in you that was like, no, I'm not. Because that is what you're talking about, that universal language of energy. That is the truth. The truth is, so if it's like, I'm worthy of that movie star I'm in love with, it's like, okay, well, (laughs) you know that deep inside, you don't really feel that way. And that's what you will get, right? Or if you think I'm going to be, I'm going to be a fitness model, but inside whatever's happening on those subconscious levels, that is what you're going to get. Yeah. Right. And we've both been through that. I've been through a big health transformation, right? I used to be overweight and it wasn't until the energetics on the, the subconscious were like, no, I freaking know. Like, I don't even care what anybody thinks or says. I don't need anybody to know. I freaking know what I'm doing. Like this is happening. Right. And until that is in full belief, it won't happen because that's the truth. Right. So if you think I'm going to be a millionaire, I'm going to be a millionaire. And there's even 0.0014% that's like, no, you're not, then you're not. 
you're actually a piece of shit. You're like, all right, I guess I am. Right. Yeah. Right. It, Cause that's the truth. Right. We can, I, right now I can say your face is green, but I don't really believe that. Right. right. So we can say these things, but it's really, it's like, feel it in your body. What do you actually feel? Okay. There's the truth. That's mm-hmm. truth without words. <laughs> yeah. And then there's, you know, there's caveats to everything. It's like, how do you, how do you get somebody to believe a truth that they've never experienced? Yeah. I just had that discussion the other day. It's kind of like, you got to play pretend I'll let you take that one, but you do kind of have to play in a reality that you haven't experienced, which is what you did, right? Like coming from your background and shifting into things like, did you have moments where you were like, okay, like I see where this is going. I'm, you know, or was it just like, it just kept kind of kept happening and you just stayed in each level while you were there. What did that feel like for you? Yeah. I, so I went through a lot of phases of money. I went through working five jobs and going to college full time. Uh, I was in the rat race. I had no, I, all my time was dedicated to working and I had no money to show for it. And I thought, shit, well, this is going to be my life. And that's cool. Right. I love my jobs. I'm okay with this. Right. Maybe I'll get a degree in college. And when I went to college to dance, actually, I loved to dance. It was my first career. I was a hip hop instructor. Oh, really? Loved cool. It. Yeah. It doesn't get a bill <laughs> Oh yeah. yeah. Good. But so I, I, I ended up dropping out of college to work with another guy at his gym as a personal trainer. And I loved it. We opened up the gym, super toxic, worst boss I ever had in my entire life. So emotionally abusive oh, and no. up being, starting my own gym. And so I ran my own gym for about three and a half years. And that, that gym was the, the turning point for me because I was in this environment where I was, you know, I opened it at 21, right? So I'm 21 year old kid. I'm like in railing steroids. So I'm jacked. I'm good looking. I'm rich from all my, like, I'm the fucking man at this point, right? <laughs> like, you can't tell me anything about life. I've got it figured out. <laughs> Who the fuck are you to tell me nothing? I was like paying all my bills and making 3000 bucks a month, right? Like, this is insane. Mm-hmm. And then I, I just started realizing that no matter how far I looked down the road of my future, I saw my future. And I know that, that right there, everyone's like, well, yeah, duh. But no, I saw exactly what my future looked like. Mm. And it was at that gym. And I thought, mm. whoa. Because I was like, hey, 50 years from now, and I was still picking up kettlebells and putting them back. And I was like, whoa. Right. <laughs> but the, the, the thing this is, this goes back to the thing with money. When we cling to what we know, everything we know is a byproduct of the past, right? You cannot know me unless you and I share a past together, even if it was just, just meeting before this call. Right. So if I look in the future and I see it and I know it, then that means my past is just going to keep being recreated in my future. Mm. And I was like, I can't do that. So we have this thing, we're afraid of the unknown. So we cling to the known. And as a byproduct, our past keeps reasserting itself into our future. When we have this, this loophole cycle, we go, I don't know why my life keeps looking. I don't know why I keep dating the same guys with a different face. I don't know why I keep eating 12 large pizzas every weekend. And it's, it's a byproduct of not being able to lean into the unknown and trust yourself and the universe to be okay. Mm. So in 30 days, I was like, I got to do this. I closed my gym down. I sold all the equipment and I moved awesome. downtown San Diego. So in the span of two weeks, my income dropped 70% and my living expenses doubled. Wow. And this is where everybody runs to the known. Right. I know I was working at the boys and girls club. I worked at that gym. I know I could go get my, I know I could go get my jobs back and be secure. <laughs> right. Or I can lean in. Mm. And I basically, I looked at, my finances. And I said, I have two months to make this work or I'm homeless. And now that, that right there is more, more substantial or significant than most people think when I first say it, because I could have went and moved back in with my mom. No problem. Mm -hmm. My mom and her husband, they were like, dude, we have a room. It's all yours, whatever you need. And it wasn't even a thought in my mind. My thought was, if I do not make this work in two months, I'm homeless because this is what I was meant to do. Maybe not forever. That's another, that's another trap people keep themselves in, but this is what I'm meant to do right now. Mm -hmm. And I need all of me in for it to work. And so I went all in and there was scarcity involved, right? 
it totally. was, I was running from the trailer park, right? I was like, totally. oh, I'm back to that again. I've been there. And <laughs> a year later, I was actually able to buy the first house I've ever lived in. Mm. And that was such, it's probably one of the best core memories of my entire life. Mm. And fast forward from there, built the online coaching business to almost 5 million a year and found myself in a really toxic relationship. Nice. Myself, my Oof. business, and my partner. Mm. And that relationship changed my entire life. It changed my entire life. Mm. I realized that this is where I realized I learned the lesson that money just amplifies. It doesn't change. So there was a lot of infidelity in my relationship, right? There was a lot of, and some of them are with my best friends. Mm. And it was really hard. I lost myself as a man. And so I it's like, maybe if I take more steroids, she'll love me. And then we can stop this. Maybe if I make more money, this will change. I'll have value, right? My value will be there if I build this business and, you know, making the most money. And as a byproduct, all my relationships were built off of what I was doing. Right. Because who I was, was tied into what I did because I didn't know who I was. Right. Been there. So it all fell through and I felt like I lost everything. And it ended with me in the, in the backyard with a gun to my head, ready to end it all. Mm. Because I didn't know who I was without this life I had created. Mm. And I heard a voice behind me saying, no. <laughs> and I turned around and no one was there. And that it like woke me up and I, I really had to sit and I took like three, four months. I moved back to San Diego and it's like three, four months of just pure stillness and regulation. Nice. And I, what I had to realize, I, I was convinced myself I was running towards success. I was running towards the status, but actually I was running from myself. Mm. And I convinced myself I was chasing, you know, I had a big dream. I got to build, I got to move. And a lot of people, when a lot of people work with me, they always say, oh, I got to stay busy or I go crazy. I'm like, well, that's trauma. Let's dig into yeah. that. Right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So I spent like three to four months just doing my bare minimum work. And I would go sit at the beach and meditate and just cry mm -hmm. four months and oh, just yeah. they allowed my, everything to catch up to me and learn the wisdom and start to unlearn things. So Man, maybe this isn't what I want to be known for. Maybe because on paper, I had millions of dollars. I had a supercar. I had the nice house. I had the, the relationship. I had the dog, like everything anybody chases, I had. And I was miserable. I was so depressed. And I felt like such an imposter because like you said, this is what I was saying. But on the inside, I knew it wasn't the truth. Right. You were proving that you were that guy abandoning yourself. Yes. You thought it was for you. Like, look at me, but it was just all proving, all proving energy. It was the mask. It was, I'm so, I was operating in lack. Right. So desperate for somebody to love me. I'm so yeah. desperate, right? The relationship. Oh God, I just want it so bad. And then it's repelled from you. Right. And so it feels like no matter how much you make, it's never enough. Mm -hmm. And that's why I mean, when I tell people, cool, I'll give you everything you've ever asked for. Now what? Mm -hmm. Nothing changes. Because once I was making 2 million, I was, I felt like a piece of shit because I wasn't making 10. Right. Once I got my supercar, I was a piece of shit because it wasn't a Lambo. And there's just right. all these comparisons and it never stops. I call it dangling carrot syndrome. Yeah. Yeah. Never. It, be, it doesn't matter if you have $10 or $10 million. If you, however you see life, it's like, now I need 20. Now I need 20. Now it's, it doesn't matter. It's a way of being, which is exactly what you're describing. And I'm Thank you for sharing that, first of all. And I'm like, okay, I love hearing this, right? Because I, I've been through a similar path, right? At first it was, for me, it was a lot of, you know, plant medicines, ayahuasca, meditation. I haven't being, done Mother Aya yet. yet. Oh I man. I haven't done Oof. Mother Aya yet. I've done she's, a lot, but not her. She's another level, you know, and I was really grateful that she came in at a time in my life that, I mean, it. I was starting to be in this energy that you're talking about of like, I didn't realize it. I've always had a good heart, but I didn't realize like a lot of my endeavors, especially in business or health, it was to prove 
right? Mm -hmm. Like I can be this person. Like it was so selfish. It was so self-centered, even though I was cared about people and was helping people. It was still like all about me. And I came in and just healed my freaking heart. And it just changed everything. I was like, none of that matters. None of that matters. <laughs> oh my God. It, but, but that's where I want to hear. Cause you had a similar, like that I am moment was for you, like feeling all your feelings, remembering yeah. who you are sitting on the beach in silence, like going into silence and stillness. And so like, that's a really, that's a, that's a powerful place to be because like you, I always say like, you know what? maybe the trauma responses were part of your path for a reason, right? Like I got fit out of a trauma response of my, in my marriage, right? It was like, I will be enough for you. Right. And I went through my healing, but I'm kind of glad, grateful for the trauma response time because I learned a lot of cool stuff about how to be healthy in my trauma response. Right. And I learned a lot about building business in that time. So then you come into this healing space and here you are, you know, and you're like, I'm sure, did you have some feelings of like, what am I doing? Should I just let all of this go? Should I let this whole identity, all of it go and like just live on the beach and start over? You know what I mean? Like, so what what Uh, happened? I literally had to, Mm. you know, the thing that I teach the entrepreneurs I work with is if, if that's the energetic signature you have, when you build, it's the energetic signature that's there. Mm. So when I looked at my life, my business, my relationships, it was all built with self-hate, trying to prove myself, scarcity, lack, this level emotions. And when it all crumbled, I realized nobody was there for me. And I was really resentful at first, but then I had to look at myself and thought, well, those were all the relationships that I made because that was the energy I had and everything I did. So I had to, I walked completely away from that seven figure business. Wow. And that was when I started doing what I do now, which is the mastermind and working with people one-on-one and wow. really helping people make sure that, you know, your business is a reflection of you. And yeah. most of the time people are, are building a business out of a trauma response. It's like, I just want my dad to be proud of me, or I just want my mom to love me. And right. then like, we take these people in and we put them through, I have a method that we call straight A self mastery. And we take them through these steps and they kind of realize, holy shit, this isn't what I want to do. Or, wow, this is really who who I am. And it's like, cool. Does that version of you still want to do this? Or does this now want to evolve as you've evolved? Yeah. It almost always does because people keep themselves in the prison of, well, shit, I like for us, right? Fitness coach. You're like, well, I've always been a fitness coach. And like, that's what I have to be for the rest of my life. So people don't make decisions to have a career path because they're not sure if that's what they want to do forever. Mm. But really, it's like whatever you're being called to do right now, do it. And as you evolve, the way that you serve others evolves. And that's okay. Right. People think that you're a failure if you start a business and then change it and this and that. It's like, I have had so many incredible lives already mm-hmm. because I've, I've, I've had my, I've been the sponsored skateboarder. I've been the dance. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I've been the dance choreographer. That's you know, cool. I've been the gym owner. I've been the competitor coach. I've been the mentor. Wow. I've been the mastermind host. I've been the keynote speaker. I've like, I've had cool. so many lives already because I allow myself to evolve. Yes. And yeah. that's, that's like my, my role in life is not to find a place where I'll stay forever my role in life is to evolve as many times as I can until I'm dead. I'm really curious to get a little deeper into your psychology because it it's, it's really, really cool. Cause like when you're in this moment of like, I, I imagine the moment where you were like, Oh my God, I'm going to be like 50 years from now picking up kettlebells and you're looking <laughs> at that gym and you're like, Oh my God. Oh my God. I had that moment when I went to see three eleven. by the way, I was just, I was there to see like the opening band. I love Ayaterra. And so I'm watching three eleven. I'm like, God damn, how long have they been doing this? I'm like Googling, <laughs> like when did three, they started in the eighties the wow. and I was like, Oh my God. And I'm watching them. And I was like, dude, I can't do that. I would yeah, not be able to sing Amber is a color of your energy from like 90 something to 2022. Like, yeah, no, whoa. Right. Cause I could sense it. The reason I Googled it is because I could sense it in them. Mm-hmm. I could sense that when they sang Amber, mm-hmm. no disrespect, cause it's a beautiful song, but it was like, I could tell, I was like, wow, they're they like on this a lot. Of yeah, they weren't there anymore. Right. It felt oh. like it felt, I felt that, you know, and 
And so anyway, coming back to you being like, I mean, by all means, if somebody wants to sing Amber is the color of your energy for 40 years, like go for it. Sure. Right. <laughs> no, probably not though. Probably not. I would assume for most people, most people. Just to, just to interrupt you real quick. Cause I think this yeah. is important for most people to understand. Mm -hmm. We as human beings, we, we have our autonomous nervous system and our brain and our nervous system is built on efficiency, which means it's built to save the most amount of energy. You wake up, you pull the covers off with the same hand right. go in the bathroom, you brush your teeth with the same toothbrush. You, you know, you get in the shower, you, you wash yourself off with the same side of the towel first. Mm -hmm. Every time we have all these routines where we're unconscious because when we do things for long enough, the brain starts to go, okay, we know this, right? You can drive to the gym. You don't even realize you're like, oh, I'm here. I didn't realize I was driving. And so when you've done something over and over and over and over every day for the rest of your life or for your entire life, you become unconscious and you're never present. So you're right. not, you're just existing and you're not actually alive. Mm -hmm. And that's the biggest breakthrough we give to people. Mm, that's awesome. Right? That's the, yeah. why they're probably not there is because their brains are like, well, here's another one. We don't even need you. We don't need you to be alive while you do this. Cause we can do it without you thinking about it. Right. I, I you know, I, I use that example too, a lot in my coaching. I'm like, it, our, we would gas out really imagine you, you would have to learn how to talk every day or learn yeah. how to walk every day. If our, if we weren't built like that. So we are built for efficiency. Right. And so it's like, that's where the soul has to come in and be like, how am I actually feeling about this and mm -hmm. take that brave, bold, mm, kind of leaning off on the side of the cliff a little bit. Cause you're not really sure if there's something there to catch you, but it's like, I don't know, dude, but I just feel like I got to go this way. And that's what I wanted to get to with you because okay. like, what do you think it is in you that causes you to take that? I mean, walking away from a seven figure company because it didn't feel right anymore. That's ballsy, you know, walking away from this gym that you started when you're 21 years old to go basically be in like, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm going to figure it out. Like, what do you think it is in you that compels you to do that? I think it's just like, it's, there's multiple ways I could do this and they're all right. You know, they're all, they're all a truth. So it's yeah. hard to figure yeah. out which one. Um, I think that's part of your answer <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so you, that like, you think that way. Well, whatever truth I want will be true. Mm. So if I, if I really can surrender and surrender does not mean to give up. So people surrender is what makes you stronger than ever. You look at the, the samurai warrior in the heat of battle. He has surrendered to fate. Mm. He says, if, if this is the war that I die, then so be it. Yeah. And that liberation, that surrender to his fate allows him to fight harder and better than any other man on the battlefield. So surrender is our most powerful, powerful state of being. I have it tattooed down my neck right here. Mm. It saved my life. Mm. And so can you, can you continue to surrender to the unknown, even when it feels like all hope is lost? Mm. Can you sit there, whoever you believe in, can you sit there in a meditation and just put your palms up to God and say, I don't understand, but just move me where I need to be. And I will show up my absolute best. Can you, can you look at the insignificant things and do them significantly? And if that's my truth, if my truth is that I'm significant in anything that I do. So if I, if you're, if you're listening to this, you're a brand new entrepreneur and you're like, well, I don't, I don't want to go live with one person shows up. It's insignificant to you right now. Cause if you thought it was significant, you would do it. If you thought that going live to one person was significant, you would do it. Totally. So if I show up and there's one person, that one person's getting a, a hour free coaching session with me because everything I do will be significant and I'm not looking for praise. I'm not looking for return. I'm not looking for a payout. I'm looking for who I want to be in every day of my life. And when I can be that mm -hmm. and I can surrender to everything else, there's no possibility things don't work out. Mm. Yeah. Belief in yourself. And, yes, and, yes. I, and I hear self-worth, you know, and even though there were times, as you mentioned in that low, low, that 
you had, there was some self-abandoning and, you know, trauma responses and all that childhood stuff that came up. I still hear that there was a, there was definitely a piece of you that always knew your worth, right? Because you have to, in order to take risks, right? And you, my, my 15 year old son, he's, um, I I don't know. I feel like probably athletically, he's kind of like you, like he, he'll take crazy risks. He he, skateboard. He's just so tenacious with it. He's just like over and over and over. Like I will get it. I will get it. I will get it like thousands of times, you know? And, and, and I asked him sometimes, cause he'll take some, some risks that I admire, right? Like when we're like hiking, he'll do some jumps. I'm like, Oh my gosh. I'm like, you sure you got it? And I'm, he's like, yeah, I got it. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> and I admire it. And I asked him, I'm like, why do you think you're willing to take such big physical risks? And he's like, I don't know. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm so like, curious. he's 15, right? So I'm like, no, but think about it. Like try to think of it. And he's like, cause what's the worst that's going to happen? I'm just going to fall. He's like, also, I like trust myself to fall. I trust myself to fall. Right. Yeah. And I hear that in you too. It's just like you, you, there's like a certain amount of trust of like, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. I'll, I'll, I can fall. <laughs> yeah, I, I think people, people are so, so afraid of failure <laughs> that they keep themselves in an entire life of failure. <laughs> so good. And yes. It's, it's the paradox. People right. are. Like people are miserable. They're not making any money. They're in relationships they hate. They hate themselves. They're overweight. And they go, but I don't want to try because what if I fail? And I'm like, hey, <laughs> reality check. You're a failure right now. And I mean that with so much love. But it's right. like, you got to right. wake up. You're bullshitting yourself. Like, I love right. myself. I'm like, look, you don't eat yourself to 300 pounds out of self-love. No, You don't right. do it. And that's hard for people to hear. And it's like, I'm telling you this to wake you up because you are bullshitting yourself through life at expiration dates coming up and you're pretending it doesn't exist. Yeah. Yeah. And you can take it that way if you want to, but yeah, you're so right. Like that, that fear of failure, you know, I mean, I found that a lot in myself because like having kids, I kind of, I mean, I ran, but I didn't like do anything else athletically. Right. So when I got into training and like really hardcore into that, I remember the first time I tried to do a box jump, I didn't even know if I could jump onto something. Like I I sat there with that and I was like, dude, what the heck? And so I like, I jumped on some stairs and I'm like, dude, you can freaking jump. But it was that, like, it was that mentality. It was such an eye opening moment for me because I was like, that's how I've been living my life. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm too afraid to even try to jump with both feet up three stairs. I'm like, got it. It was, yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, go ahead. It's like, what what's the worst case scenario that happened? <laughs> right. right. Like let's and like when you actually like walk people through it, they're like, I never thought about that. You're like, you're right. Because you never, you're not thinking, you're unconscious. Yep. The second that you actually just stop and ask somebody real questions, it's really threatening to the average person's nervous system because their ego is like, wait a minute, hey, we've I got to be seen you know, as awesome. We've done, we've done a good job at keeping them not thinking about this stuff. So, like, what are you doing right now? And you're like, you know, it's like, truly, I have failed infinitely more times than I've been right. Like, the the scale is not even comparable. How many things I've fucked up on? Mm -hmm. How many times I've tried? I've lost $400,000 in a day on investing. Like, I have have had just, like, massive fucking failures. And it was, like, you know, in the moment, you're like, holy shit. Two days later, you're like, all right, well, what's next? And it's like every failure I've ever gone through, here I am. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's vulnerability, really. You know, Uh, the ego wants you to always be like, the ego will keep you like, you'll be like in some horrible job, making the same dinner, doing, watching the same TV show for the rest of your life. Like that's where the ego would really like you to be like super safe. And you like, even with your background in like skateboarding or hip hop, that's really vulnerable. Like if you're listening right now, like you go get on a skateboard and try to do some tricks. Oh, <laughs> you don't want to, <laughs> you know, it's like, that's that side of us. It's like, well, I don't want to mess up. I don't want to fall. I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't get hurt. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's vulnerability. There's, there's well, so there's, let's go. We'll, we'll go back to money a little bit. Right. So there's, mm-hmm. there's two sides in us that battle all the time. Right. So there's this side that wants you to play small. And there's the side that wants you to play big and they, they constantly battle inside of people. Mm. Right. Mm. So 
you have this part of you and we'll just use you for an example, Tara, right? Um, don't be woke for a second. Okay. Just okay. like fall back asleep. Right? Be unconscious for me. That's for a easy. Bit. It's like, <laughs> yeah, so you have this part of you that wants to play small for what purpose? Um, I would say, uh, I, I'm trying not to be woke, but it's I like, know. it's I'm straight it's into the ego. It's just this, this like feeling of like wanting to be seen, not, not uh, wanting to be seen. almost yeah. like just wanting the people to no one to think anything of me or, right. so um, right. or I, I, I always feel like the ego gets very, it's like these like really intelligent answers, right? Like, so it would be like, well, or like these, like, um, admirable. Well, I don't want to be like that. I, you know, I, I don't care about that. Right. Like it's actually (laughs) other other thing we can sidestep. This is a cool exercise, but sidestep what you just said. I don't want to be like that. We have this connotation that if somebody is rich, successful, and wealthy, that they're a narcissist. And what people don't understand is that if like we're identity creatures. So if you are constantly shaming and guilting and casting hate on people who are rich, by a product of that, you will never be wealthy because you don't right. want to be a narcissist. Right. 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 Like, I don't want money. I don't want to be a narcissist. It's like, well, what if people like all the people I know who are fucking crazy rich are the most generous, humble people right. on right. the planet. It's just right. an ego. Like they have what I don't. So fuck them. Anyways. Yeah. So like this, you have this party that wants to play small. It doesn't want to be seen. It wants you to hide. So what does hiding give you? Like, what's that feeling that you get from being hidden? Hmm. Just comfort. Right. Comfort is what though? It's like a, a feeling of safety. Safe. Uh, right. Okay. So the main goal of that part that wants you to play small is just for you to be safe. Mm-hmm. Now let's shift for a second and let's go to the party that wants to play big. Mm-hmm. Okay. It wants you to play big for what purpose? What's the reason for you to play big? Make millions of it's, dollars. Happy. It's always for me, it's always like a soul calling. Like I got called to do something and it's like create it. Is mm-hmm. that not what you want? It be unconscious. You want, you want a more ego answer? Okay, sorry. Yeah, be unconscious, right? Yeah, somebody, somebody okay. If it's in like the a, ego. Listener, a listener right now who's struggling with this. Okay. Dialogue, yeah. It would be, yeah, to have all my hopes and dreams come true, to see the okay. world, travel. What happens? Like, what do you get when all your hopes and dreams come true? What feeling does that provide you? Um, okay, I'm trying so hard to not be. <laughs> okay, it's okay. We're gonna, we're gonna <laughs> not get be it. mindset coach, Jara. Okay, okay. If I it, then it's like feels like winning, or I did it, or I'm enough. I'm good enough now, okay. or yeah, something I'm, like that. I'm good enough. Provides you what though? Happiness. And you're happy. You've got all the things. You've got all the money. Or oh, comfort, safety safety. (laughs) Yeah. You have these two parts. This part's trying to play small. This part's trying to say big and they're fighting each other. But when you actually boil it down, they want the same thing. Love it. Now that's really confusing for people. Well, it's like, okay, have you ever given yourself a clear definition of what safety is for you? Mm. Nope. Nope. So yeah. one day you want to play small one day you want to play big. Cause these parts of your conscious, they're like, no, it's this, no, it's this. Because right. you haven't decided. Love it. So those two parts are always going to battle each other. So good. So yeah. good. Thank you. Okay. Last thing I want to get into, because you talk about like not relying on passion. What do you mean by that? Passion. Oh, okay. Passion's dangerous. <laughs> okay. Let's get into it. You look at um, law, like criminal law, you can actually be charged with a crime of passion, right? Because passion makes you act in the moment irrationally Mm -hmm. passion can make you yell at somebody passion can make you cheat on your partner passion can make you it can make you do all these crazy things and passion is very temporary Mm. so when we rely on passion we get stomped out passion Mm. passion if you want to be successful in life one bad season will stomp you out if you're passionate And that's why I I focus on people becoming obsessed with what they're doing, right? Mm -hmm. Obsession is just passion that's been reinforced over time with pain Mm -hmm. and you become obsessed. So back to, we talked about, about failing. If you're just passionate about an idea and you fail, you're like, well, not for me. (laughs) But if I'm obsessed with helping people with very specific thing, which I am now, 
Mm-hmm. You can, you can, you can make five hundred dollars a month. You can make five hundred thousand dollars a month. You can be homeless under a bridge, and you will not stop because you are obsessed. But we wait for the fucking passion fairy to come and, and mm. bless us in order to take action. Hey, did you did you go live and promote your business today? I don't know. I'm not really feeling passionate about it. Okay, well, maybe you need to be in more pain so that it becomes an obsession, right? Maybe you have to wait until you're 40 pounds more overweight before you're obsessed with changing because you're not passionate. Mm-hmm. You're more passionate about tacos than you are about how you look in the mirror, right? Mm-hmm. So when when the pain of staying the same, right, is, yeah. is greater than the pain of change, people will make the change. And, you know, when we're on sales calls with people, we do the same thing. They're like, I don't know if it's worth it to, you know, learn how to build my business and all this stuff. I'm like, my whole life. <laughs> $400 a month. Like our mastermind is super cheap. Like, I don't know oh, if that's expensive. I'm like, well, maybe you need to come back when you're homeless, right? Maybe you need to go $20,000 more in debt before you finally go, oh shit. Okay. It's time for me to yeah. change. That's just real shit. It is. Everybody who's like, achieved any level of success knows that you've got to invest in your paradigm, like having right. someone enhance your paradigm like that. Cause I like, I'm always like, trying to, I always share this message. It's like, if you, you have to accept that you literally are doing the best you can with what you got right now oh. until something new comes in. It's because I don't know about you. I get this, like, well, I know what I need to do. I just need to do it. I'm like, you don't know what you need to do. I don't say it directly like that to people, but I'm like, no, 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 no. Like you, the way you think it needs to be done is why it's not happening. Like this is going to be a complete and total paradigm shift on how you're looking at it. Like, okay, you want me to give you a meal plan? I could charge you $47. Like I don't, that's not, it's so much more than that. Right. Like somebody's like, Hey, help me get rich. And you're like, okay, here's your little worksheet 40 bucks. It's like, that's not it. (laughs) I don't do, I don't do rich. I do wealthy. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. There's a and big it's, difference. It's how you're looking at it. It's well, how you're looking rich at it. is money, right? Anybody right. can be rich. You can hate yourself and be rich. You can scam <laughs> people and be rich. You can love what you're doing. Wealth is yeah. my health, wealth relationships, and the view of myself are the best that they ever could be. And I don't need anything else, but I'm creating from love. That's wealth. Yep. 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 That's, that's where we get people. Mm hmm. You know, it's funny. I'm going to FN probably people who live in my area, but I live in this, like, what I, it's like, keep up the, keep up with the Joneses, suburbia, Mm -hmm. white picket fences, the houses all kind of look the same, like that kind of area. And I don't really, I mean, I'm grateful for it in a lot of ways, but it's not like really my, my jam, right? Like I live here because my kid's dad lives over here where on the East side of Salt Lake Valley, it's more wealth over here. It's more like, yeah, there's wealth, but it's more like that, like new wealth, right? Yeah. Trying to prove it. Like I got the, I got I all the nice the cars and the for a Louis belt. Yeah. Right. And there's some of that over there too, but not as much. It's more like, you know, I mean, if you've, if, if, if you are wealthy or you've been around wealth, you know, that like, you're not, most of people are not trying to prove anything. It's like more of the, it's just like a very much, a much calmer, loving, like real, raw, genuine energy. And so my kids go to school over there. They go to, they want to go to that high school because their dad actually grew up over there. They're, they're going over there. And they, my son was telling me yesterday, he's like, the kids are so different over here than they are over where we live. Like nobody's like, nobody's like trying to be anything there, but they like are doing cool stuff. Like, like my, I have this new friend. He's like, start, he has a, his own business going already. And like, this other guy's like starting a band, he's in a band and like they perform and like, he's like, it's just such a different energy. And I was like, yeah, it's because probably the, the home they've been raised in is more of the energy of like, just be you, just well, do you just, it's, it's- collaboration versus um what's the, what's competition the competition thank you yeah that's competition versus collaboration you look at right. anybody, you look at anybody at the top and they're going well, what can i do to help you be more successful exactly you look at everybody at the bottom and they're like i don't want to tell you what i'm doing because i don't want you to get be- get there faster than me totally and people want to be rich and they don't understand how to be wealthy so they're broke their whole lives Mm, mm. wealth is generosity it's time energy it's planting seeds Mm. you have to plant a seed every day for the rest of your life if you want to be wealthy and a lot of those seeds you're not going to reap the harvest the Mm. issue people will plant seeds for 30 days they'll see the first seeds start to harvest and they'll stop planting seeds and run to start collecting the harvest and then once all the seeds have sprouted they go I don't understand. I'm not getting any clients my business isn't growing nobody's reaching out I can't get a job and it's like did you stop planting seeds Oh shit. Yeah, I did. Cool. Well, now you got three months to start all over again before it comes back. 
Mm-hmm. So yeah. you gotta you gotta figure out what do I want my life to look like, what do I want my life to feel like, and what do I want my life to be about. Mm-hmm. And if I can just make sure that I am doing that every single day, then the end goals will take care of themselves. I can stop hyper focusing on where I'm trying to get to, and right. I can just focus on what I'm doing every day. Love it. All right. So tell us about your mastermind. What's it called? How can people find out about it? Yeah. Yeah. So the impact legacy mastermind is what it's called. Impact industries is my, like my rebrand impact has always been a part of my, my life. So the impact legacy mastermind, uh, we host about 12 live call trainings in there a month. So we're very hands-on with our people. Um, and we do everything from post-call integrations for healing. We do a lot of self-mastery, leadership development. We do cool. business scaling. We we audit sales calls. We audit marketing. I mean, we do That's cool. every everything we can to help people. And, you know, people, we have entrepreneurs and people who work for others that are in there. It's just a really big community where we help people kind of heal, step into their power and figure out how to be truly wealthy in life. Nice. You know, and yeah, it's a super low ticket entry points. It's 425 a month is our baseline entry and you get access to me and everybody involved. That's awesome. Where can people go where to find? Uh, they can that. just find me on Instagram. My Instagram, that's the bio for it. And we do an application. I don't take everybody, right? Because not mm-hmm. everybody's ready for what we offer. And I don't, I don't take people's money unless I know we can help them. Mm-hmm. So okay. there's an application process to get in. Okay. Awesome. We will link that up in the show notes in case anybody is so lucky. Nick, good job doing your work, dude. Thank you very much. (laughs) You've been putting in work. It's awesome. It's obvious that you have discovered the mindsets within yourself. And it's, it's a, it's a breath of fresh air for me, honestly, because like in the entrepreneurial world, like sometimes it's just like, it's a lot of trauma responses or a lot of people who aren't, there's a lot of people like you, but there's a lot of trauma response proving now I'm enough dad, right? Dad, you know, and it's, Honestly, like it's kind of made me step out of the entrepreneur world a little bit because I get tired of being around that energy. I'm just like, freak, dude, like I don't yeah, I want. <laughs> and it goes right back to that toxic relationship with money thing, right? Hey, I'll yeah. tell you what, anybody, anybody, any of your listeners, uh, if you guys want to DM me and mention this podcast, I'll send you the a free masterclass that I did on how to heal your relationship with money. Awesome. Thank you for that. Appreciate no it. All right. Well, thank you so much. Pleasure to meet you. Maybe run run into you in Austin sometime. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Maybe. All right. Thanks.